It's really important that we learn about force as uh, this will be a topic that runs throughout the semester. Helps us explain why planets orbit stars, how stars form out of huge clouds of gas and dust, and the ways in which galaxies develop and evolve over time. At its general level, force is just the interaction between two objects. So this uh, definition will be useful and it's a very, very powerful way of starting to think about how forces come into being and what they actually mean. So it's the interaction between two objects. So since force is the interaction between two objects, that means that if we have a single object represented by this person, there can be no force for the single object. However, if you have two people, let's say they're connected by something like a rope, and that means they're in contact with each other and they're each pulling on each other, there'll be a force. So with two objects, you can have a force. And in fact, the force itself that is between the two objects is really just one force they both feel. So it's really valuable to start thinking about force as the way two objects interact with each other. If one of these people starts pulling on the rope harder, the other person's gonna feel that and will have to pull back equally. So it's really a single force that they're both feeling that just happens to point in opposite directions. I'm gonna continue uh, with going to an everyday application. You can imagine that you have a car and if you wanna make this car move, you have to exert a force on it. And so you can imagine that you have a person who's pushing on the car. You could also imagine that you could have a person who's pulling on the car. In either case, the person is in contact with the car and they're either pushing or pulling on the car. And these two types of forces, pushes and pulls, that come from being in contact between two objects are sort of the majority of the forces that we experience in our everyday lives. So I'm gonna move forward to talk about a force that's really important for astronomy that doesn't involve being in contact with an object, but still involves two objects for the force to exist. And that force that I wanna start talking about is the force of gravity. So the thing that makes it uh, a piece of the reasoning about the force of gravity that's very important is that the force of gravity is always an attractive force and it exists between any two objects that have mass. So it's an attractive force between any two objects that have mass. And we can define how strong the gravitational force is by saying that the gravitational force is found, its strength is found by multiplying the mass of the two objects involved together and then dividing by their distance squared. So you can imagine I draw two objects uh, mass one and mass two. I've shown that they're separated by a distance d apart from each other. And then I'm gonna draw an arrow and I want that arrow to represent both the direction and the strength of the gravitational force that each object will feel. So I've drawn two arrows and they're pointing towards each other indicating that they're both being attracted to each other. And then I'm gonna draw a little uh, symbol here to represent that the, on the left, I have the force of gravity that's on object one from object two. And on the right, I have the force of gravity that's on object two by object one. And I just wanna make the note that these two forces again are the exact same strength force. Really, they're just one force, the force of gravity, that masses one and masses two are both feeling. And the strength of that force is directly related to the masses that both objects have and the distance they are apart squared. We'll talk a little bit about how the strength of the gravitational force depends on mass and distance in the next slides. So again, we have the force of gravity is proportional to the um, two masses multiplied together divided by their distance squared. And I can draw two objects and I can draw an arrow to indicate the size of the force that's on both objects. So let's imagine that the object on the left were made much more massive, which I'll indicate by drawing a much bigger circle. So now that's a much more massive object on the left, same size object on the right and I separate them by the same distance apart, you can imagine now that the force that they would each be feeling would get much stronger because of the increased mass. So a general rule is that if the mass goes up for either of the objects, if either objects becomes more massive, then the force of gravity will also go up for both objects. Now let's look at another case. Now if, what if I made the mass of the object on the left a little smaller, indicated by the smaller circle, and I draw the forces for both objects, that force is now gonna be quite a bit weaker, which I indicate with a smaller arrow. It's still gonna be attractive, and both objects are still gonna feel the exact same force. So we have, if the mass of either object decreases, gets smaller, then the strength of the gravitational force will also decrease, and that will be true for both objects. They'll both feel the smaller force. 
Now, in another case, I could imagine having the two objects from above and I don't change their masses. Instead, I significantly increase how far they are apart. So I separate them by a much greater distance. That will cause the attractive force that they both feel to get much, much weaker, which I indicate with the smaller arrow. So another general rule we have is if the distance goes up, they get farther apart. Then the force of gravity, the strength of that force, will get much, much weaker or go down. And that is true for both objects. They both feel a smaller force. Now, as a last case, I can imagine drawing the same two sized objects, but move them much closer together. And as you can imagine now, that's going to cause the gravitational force that they each feel to get much stronger. And so if the distance is decreased, then the force of gravity that each object feels will become greater. Okay, I want us to consider three cases, each with two rocks in it. In the first case, there's two rocks, each with mass m, separated by a distance d. And the rock on the left I'll identify as rock A. In the second case, there's two rocks, each separated by a distance d, same distance. And the rock on the right, notice, is only half of the mass, m. And we're going to identify the rock on the left with the letter b, so that's rock b. And in the third case, again, we have two rocks still separated by the same distance d. Both rocks in this case have half of the mass m. And we will identify the rock on the left with the letter c, so that's rock c. And so what I want you to think about is how would you rank the gravitational force for rocks A, B, and C from greatest to least? So take a little time and uh, think about this. Think about your answer. And also I want you to think about how would you explain your reasoning? How would you have a conversation with one of your classmates to explain why you came up with the answer that you did? All right, let's go back to that uh, set of cases we were looking at, where we had the three cases, each separated by a distance d. We had rocks a, b, and c. I'm going to draw the arrows in that show um, how much force is on every rock in each of the pairs. And you see that the top rocks have a pretty big force on them. They're both mass m at a distance d apart. And the rocks in the middle case have a slightly smaller force, and that's because one of the two masses in that pair got, is less massive and therefore the force they both have on each other gets slightly smaller. And in the bottom case, both rocks' mass gets smaller and so the force that each of those rocks will have on it will be even smaller still. So we have the smallest force on rock C and the largest force on rock A. So we have A is greater than B is greater than C. And just to make the point, even though the rocks in case B aren't the same mass, they still have the same size force on them. So we have a smaller force than in case A, but the force between the two rocks in case B are still equal to each other. Okay, now I'd like us to start thinking about a final case. Um, and so we have the Earth, labeled with E. I have the Moon, smaller object a distance away. I've identified the midpoint between the Earth and the Moon, and I've identified a point A which is closer to the Earth, and a point C, which is closer to the Moon, and point B, which is in the middle of the two, at the midpoint. I'll draw a little spacecraft that's traveling between Earth and the Moon. I have three questions I want you to think about. And the first is, at which of the locations, A, B, or C, will a spacecraft feel the strongest gravitational force from Earth? And at which of the locations, A, B, or C, will the spacecraft feel the strongest, or excuse me, weakest gravitational force from the Moon? And finally, would the net force or combined force on the spacecraft by both the Earth and the Moon be smaller at A, B, or C? So I want you to think about this question and think about your answer for a little bit and also think about how you'd explain your reasoning to a fellow classmate. And there'll be a quiz over the force of gravity when you come back to class next. We'll see you there.